What's up, everyone? Welcome to week 14 of Entry Point. I can't believe that we are only one class away from finishing up here. Uh, it's been super fun. Thank you so much to everybody who's been part of it. Today, I've got a fun family holiday thing happening, and so I can't be here live with you. So instead, I'm pre-recording this class. Uh, that said, if you have any questions at all, please feel free to drop them in the comments or on the Facebook group, and I'll do my best to answer them as soon as possible. Uh, if this is the first video you've seen from this course, it's worth mentioning that this is part of a 15-week series designed to get you to the first draft of a feature screenplay. The whole thing is foundational. It builds upon itself in like an intentional way. So if your goal is to write a script, whether it's your first or you know otherwise, uh, it's probably worth going back and starting from the beginning. I will be pulling these videos down in late February. So if you uh, just go like a little bit faster than once a week on average, uh, you'll be able to stay on track. Anyway, for those of you who've been following along and keeping up, you are closing in on that first draft, which is amazing. Uh, some of you have finished it already, and I hope that every single one of you is finding a way to celebrate that achievement, because make no mistake, it is an achievement. You know, lots of people dream about writing a whole screenplay, but few ever do it. So congratulations, because, you know, you are either now or you're about to be one of those few, and even if you're perhaps like a few drafts away from having it where you want it, you're getting there. But on that note, I'm gonna take today's class to talk about that last part, getting it where you want it. So it is commonly said that writing is rewriting, and I absolutely believe this to be true. Uh, you know, our best ideas are often like rarely the first ideas that we have. Thomas Edison was said to have, you know, tried out 1000 versions of the light bulb, and in response to a reporter asking how it felt to have failed a thousand times, he said to have responded that he didn't fail 1,000 times, but that the light bulb was simply an invention with 1,000 steps. And uh, I think our screenplays are a lot like that. So that's why there are 15 classes worth of material making up all of these videos. Uh, you know, to get to the good stuff, we almost always need to do a whole lot of iterating. Uh, and so that begins with our first ideas, as soon as we have the concept and try to break the story uh, or, you know, figure out what it's about and who it's about, we change and we build on those ideas as we outline. And then we change and we build on those again as we move on to our first drafts. And often we change and build on those first drafts and, and change all those ideas as we're writing those first drafts, going back and tweaking and just like fiddling with things along the way. And none of this even includes the hundreds of ideas that we outright dismissed uh, and that didn't even make it onto paper in one way or another. This means that our first drafts are a hell of a lot closer to the good stuff than when we started, but they're not there yet. To get there, we probably need to rewrite and we probably need to rewrite a few times. So what do I mean when I say rewrite? Uh, there are a few levels of rewrites. There are polishes, which really just involve the odd scene change here and some dialogue tweaking there. Uh, you know, maybe some additional emphasis on theme and character arcs and like a bit of intention applied to get the tone consistent throughout. This is what we do when the script is truly nearly finished, and it rarely takes us more than a few days. Uh, but it's not uncommon for newer writers to only do this type of rewrite. So I just wanna warn you about that up front because although it's a hell of a lot more work, nearly every draft needs something more significant than that. Um, and that might be a standard rewrite. So a standard rewrite, or just, you know, a rewrite, will certainly involve all the same things as a polish, but it goes deeper than that. Now there's like, you know, there's a big range here, but when we're doing a true rewrite, we're doing it with an awareness of entire scenes or even sequences that don't really work at all, or at least don't work yet. Characters may need to be cut or combined with others, or perhaps new characters need to be added. We might need an entirely new ending or opening. We're reinventing large parts of the script here. It's a lot of work because it requires untangling all these ideas that are now somewhat cemented in our heads to make space for new ones. It's also scary because it means completely discarding and letting go of all these things that we have labored over. But it is not the scariest form of a rewrite. Not at all. Uh, that title goes to the page one rewrite, the mother of all brutal revisions. Uh, when there is enough about a script that isn't working, it's often a better idea to start over with a brand new document. Sometimes because we obviously, you know, saved that first draft, we can copy over, you know, and paste small sections and then tweak them to make them fit. But in general, with a page one rewrite, what we're doing is we're writing a new draft, just brand new from the start. Uh, and, you know, it simply has some things that are in common with the first draft. 
Page one rewrites are done when things aren't working. Maybe the tone or the theme is just entirely wrong. If that's the case, it's going to inform the bulk of the decisions in the script. And if we don't start with a new document, it's almost impossible to be authentic to all the changes that actually need to be made. And so we start over. And sometimes the characters just aren't working at all. Sometimes the take on the genre feels wrong. Sometimes the plot is backward or is just in need of enough massive changes that for the sake of consistency, a new document is the smarter move. It is a really, really scary thing to start over from scratch, but I will say this, uh, every single time I've done it, within like one or two pages of beginning that new document, I have felt like a certain amount of relief. I knew that some major revisions were necessary and that blank page just gave me the freedom to go after them. And from the outset, I was able to see that I'd made the right call. I have done a page one rewrite on four out of five of my most recent scripts. They are brutal, uh, but they're often what's needed. So I want you to go and just open your minds to that idea. For me, the first draft often just allows me to figure out what that movie wants to be. And then starting over from scratch allows me to, to uh, deliver on that. A typical rewrite process might, you know, be like a page one rewrite and then one or two more standard rewrites and then a polish before I feel that it's ready. And then whenever I wind up, you know, attaching someone to a project, they tend to have notes, uh, often good ones, that result in two or three more rewrites. I did 11 drafts on Aftermath over the years. Three of those were for Voltage Pictures, the company that made it. And then once we had the green light and the director came on board, he did two additional rewrites to suit it to both his vision and the production budget that he had to work with. It takes a lot to get a script ready for production. So if any of this feels daunting, that is okay. It's a lot of work and you're not weird for feeling that way, especially after all you've done to like simply get to the first draft. But that is why my first tip is to rest. Uh, seriously, take a break. After you finish that first draft, celebrate your accomplishment and get a little distance from your story. First of all, recharging your batteries is critical. Uh, burnout happens to way too many writers. And I really think it's just due to the fact that they don't respect the need that their brains have for rest. Also, that distance will help you look at your script with a somewhat like fresher, more objective perspective. Uh, you'll see flaws you didn't see before. You'll be more sure of the ones that you uh, suspected and you'll have more ideas about how to make the script stronger. How long should that rest that you take be? Well, immediately after that first draft is finished, you'll likely have like a few ideas of things that you wanna fix. I don't think you need to wait too long to uh, tackle those. So take like a few days off and then go tackle those fixes and then give yourself an actual break. More time is often more effective here. So I just reread a script of mine that I hadn't looked at in over a year because my manager wants to do something with it. And I was appalled by how many things I wanted to improve. And this was something that I had already uh, considered ready. And it already had multiple attachments and still has multiple attachments. It is, you know, it's a professional script, but I'm probably like a slightly better writer than I was a year ago. And most importantly, I just had the luxury of that time away from it, which means that I could see things that I didn't see before. But uh, if you take a year off between every draft, you're never gonna finish anything. So that is not a good idea either. I would recommend one of two things. One, you can start with uh, a second script and just avoid looking at the first one until you finished the first draft of, on the uh, second. That'll give you like a couple months, which is a great amount of time. And then you'll have the benefit of having two scripts that you can juggle between as you get feedback and do revisions. This can be an excellent approach. Uh, it's one that I really like myself. It's okay if you don't feel like you have the energy for that though, because uh, recharging those batteries is really important. And if you spend just two or three weeks watching movies and hanging out with friends and family and maybe checking out some like other forms of art to keep you feeling creatively excited and fulfilled, you're gonna have a mostly fresh frame of mind to tackle that next rewrite with. And although I haven't in a while, when I'm working on a single project, two or three weeks is about the amount of time I take. And I feel that it's usually enough to uh, do a pretty good job. When I had a day job, the schedule and time frame for rewrites often looked something like this. So first I'd send out a punched up first draft for notes and wait two or three weeks to get them back. Using those notes to get me thinking, I'd do a large and often page one rewrite. Uh, that would take me three to four weeks. So let's say we're up to six weeks total. And then I'd send that out for notes again and wait another two or three weeks to get the feedback. 
find that I've you know still got some issues that need sorted out, so I might do the next rewrite. And that might take me two weeks. So now we're up to 10 weeks. Then I'd send that out for notes again, wait another two or three weeks to get that feedback, and hopefully find that I mostly just needed to do a polish. So I'd do that, and it would take me about a week, and then I'd have a script that was ready for submission. So that's like a three month rewrite process. And if the script needs more or more extensive rewrites, it might take four months or five. Uh, so, you know, by the time you're done, you've spent six, seven, eight months total once you include the first draft. And that's why I say that if you're actually knocking out one and a half to two scripts a year, you're doing like really well. You know, you could knock out an additional two or more scripts if you simply focused on first drafts and perhaps a couple light polishes. And there are many writers who do that uh, because they feel that they need to churn out lots of material. But here's the thing, nobody cares how many scripts you're writing if they're not written to super high standards. Uh, so in my opinion, your time is better spent really digging deep and doing multiple rewrites on the same projects until they're in a good place. And that's true even when you're just starting out because rewriting is a different muscle. You know, digging in and figuring out how to do a page one rewrite or at least a really big overhaul on something that you've already worked on, that is a different muscle than building and writing a first draft. And it's important to exercise that from the start. I will add one caveat to all of that. Don't spend more than a year to a year and a half on one project. New projects exercise different writing muscles in different ways. And if you stay stuck on the same project for too long, you're gonna be doing yourself a disservice. If you, after like four or five drafts or that year to a year and a half, you still can't get your script up to a professional standard, that is okay. You're still a new writer and the good news is you're going to continue to learn and grow. So put it aside for now. Um, if the concept's a winner, you can come back to it again when you've leveled up those skills. I have a script that I spent just over a year working on. I uh, finished it up like in March of uh, 2023. I knew it wasn't ready. I did a couple drafts on it over the summer after it had some time off. It's still not ready. Um, you know, now I've got a new manager and we've talked about it. He's had some good notes and I think now I know how to finally tackle it. So probably in January, I'm going to dig in and try it again. But in the meantime, I've written a bunch of other shit because like, again, you can't stay stuck on the same thing for too long. It's not good for you and you'll be less productive as a result. So, you know, yes, put the time into rewriting, but there is also kind of an upper limit on that and be aware of that as well. So I've mentioned notes a fair bit in this class already. Uh, they're a critical part to improving your work and learning how to interpret them and use them is critical to doing this professionally because reps and execs and producers and directors and actors and more will have thoughts. And often it's your job to execute on those things. So let's talk about getting and interpreting notes. First things first, if I'm going to ask someone to give me notes, I want to send them the best possible version that I can. Uh, there are two reasons for this. First of all, Anything someone reads for me influences their impression of me as a writer. And even though they know it's a work in progress, it doesn't matter. They won't be able to help themselves from this draft affecting their opinion. So the other reason is that I know what a big favorite is to ask somebody to read a script for me, and I want to respect their time. If I haven't bothered to solve issues I'm aware of, or if it's riddled with typos, then I am disrespecting that time. And that's not the best way to uh, keep growing a professional relationship or a friendship. Uh, so once I think I finished my rough draft, here's what I do. I open up a new Google Doc. This is my script's rewrite document. I make a bold heading that says rough draft, and then I start reading from the script in PDF form so that I can't fiddle with it because I definitely will if I'm reading it in the screenwriting software. If I notice there's an issue or a typo even, I just add it to a bullet pointed list of notes beneath the heading. Next, once I've done this, I print the draft out and I read it again. This time I use a pen to mark it the hell up. Uh, writing notes in the margins, you know, larger notes on the cover page, crossing out lines and dialogue that don't work and circling typos. Typically I use a bright orange pen for this so you know it sticks out because after I'm done, I go through the draft and all, I add all of those items to my bullet pointed list. But I do find just for some reason, for me at least, reading it you know, a, in a hard copy I find things and see things that I wouldn't have seen otherwise. At the end of all of this, I've probably got a few dozen things that I need to fix. So typically most of these are pretty simple, partially because I'm too close to it and that's why I need outside opinions. But regardless, I execute whatever I can uh, to the best of my ability and once I have, I consider this my true first draft and it is now ready to send out for notes. 
With subsequent drafts, I do a similar process, printing it out and taking notes and looking for typos and then fixing all those things. And again, once I have done all of that, it's ready to send. Okay, so it's ready to send. Who do you send it to? Uh, well, a couple classes ago, I talked about how to start building up that circle of writer friends. And you know, those people are your best resource. And I'm really pleased to see that a lot of you are already doing that and have already begun connecting. Uh, and since you're all finishing your scripts at similar times, I would absolutely recommend trading reads. I typically send each draft out to three to five readers. I think two sets of notes is too few. And honestly, I think five starts to become too many because it starts to get kind of like muddy in my head. But three or four makes for a nice snapshot of how the script is working without muddying it up too much. So the reason I send it to as many as five uh, is just because my readers are often busy and that means I may not get timely feedback from all of them, which means that sending it to five helps me hedge my bets and keep moving. Once I get those three or four sets of notes back, I'll email the others and let them know I'm good to go, but that I'd love to get their thoughts on a later draft if that's okay. Uh, and by the way, I prefer to get notes from people who haven't read prior drafts. Um, I don't do that consistently every single time, but it's usually what I do. And if you're doing the math, that means I'm probably looking for like 12 to 15 readers on a single script. Uh, and that is a lot, especially if you're writing a couple scripts a year. And that's really why it's important, or at least it's part of the reason why it's important to read a lot of scripts for others so that you've got people who are ready to take a look for you. You're probably not connected with that many writers just yet. Uh, that's fine. You may be able to find that many through this group, but I'd also recommend checking out Coverfly X, which is a free service that lets you swap scripts with other writers based on their token system. You can connect with those other writers after the fact too, if you, if you, uh, you know, find that you appreciate their feedback and their writing. Another resource is the screenwriting subreddits weekly script swap thread. And finally, you can go on like any social media platform and find other writers or writing groups and announce that you're looking to swap scripts and you will probably get takers. Um, although writers are often the best resource for improving your work, if you happen to know other people in film, whether they're aspiring or professional and they've offered to read you, that is great. Take them up on it. I would recommend sending them later drafts to read though, partially because like once again, you want them to have a, you know, the best impression of your writing possible. If they haven't offered and you're thinking about asking, sometimes that's okay. But like we talked about a couple classes ago, just remember that you're asking for a huge favor and consider the relationship and the implications of that when you do it. Um, often when we're starting out, we're tempted to send our scripts to friends or family. That is fine if you want to do that, but just be warned that they are rarely going to give you feedback that's honest, they love you, and they're going to see your writing through rose-colored glasses, focusing on like the things that they enjoy about it, and probably skipping over some of the things that would give them pause if they were watching a movie written by somebody else. Um, so, you know, take their feedback um, and be thankful for it. Uh, and just know that you should take the positive feedback with a grain of salt. Okay, so your people have read your work and now you're suddenly getting notes back. So first things first, prepare yourself. You have poured your heart into this work for months. You did your very best with it and it's very difficult to separate it from who you are as a person. This means that when inevitably people zero in on things that aren't working, it is going to hurt. Do everything you can to avoid being defensive. That's a quick way to lose a reader for life. They may have caused you a lot of pain and they may not even have been that empathetic about it, but you're gonna thank them for it anyway and you're gonna do it profusely because again, they have done you a big favor. Um, this is harder, but also try and remember not to take those notes personally. The script is not you. It is something that you've made and it is something that you can change and that can probably change for the better. And once you have changed it for the better, you'll be so, so glad that you did. And just like how finishing a script is an amazing feeling, having written something that's genuinely kind of good feels pretty unbelievable. So try not to take those notes personally. Um, they're not about you, they're about making the material better and that's something that you can do. Uh, but to get to that point, you do need to actually do something with all the notes. So here is what I like to do. When I get notes, I uh, open my rewrite document back up. I make a new heading for whatever the current draft is, and I make a subheading with the reader's name. I read through their notes, and then I summarize them in a bullet pointed list below that subheading. Once I've gotten all my notes back, I then go through the PDF of the script again, and I reread it, keeping their notes in mind, and also looking for new revelations of my own. I've had a little bit of space now, so I'll probably have a few. 
Um, I'll jot any of those down under a heading that says my notes. Once everyone's notes are listed in my rewrite document, I'll then look at them and begin to compile them in one large list for that draft. So I put the initials of the person who gave that note after each note, uh, because that allows me to keep track of whether or not more than one person had the same note. Once I've got that list, I read through them and organize them. Uh, this is me, but I like to organize them in groups of major, medium, and minor notes. And I like the notes within those groups to be in kind of a chronological order. So notes that need to be executed in several parts of the script go at the very top, but basically under the heading of that draft, I'll have my major, medium, and minor notes subheadings. And the notes that appear earliest in the script will be near the top, and um, the, or the notes that appear later will be near the bottom. Major notes are things that will require hours to execute. Medium notes can like typically be done in an hour or less. And then minor notes can be done in like five to 10 minutes or less. As I go through them, I'll also pay attention to which of them I agree need to be executed. Uh, if I disagree with a note, which can happen, and only one person had it, I'll think on it for a little bit, but if I still can't figure out a way to do it that fits my vision for the story, and if I can't think of another good reason that they might have had that note, I delete the note and I just keep going down the list. To be clear, one person having a note does not mean it's wrong. It might be brilliant, but if I don't agree with it and no one else called it out, there's probably a decent chance that it's like a stylistic thing and I don't feel bad ignoring it. If I disagree with a note but two or more people had it, I think about it a lot more carefully. Often I find myself coming around to these, at least on like a partial level, because there's typically a reason that two people had the same thought. So I don't delete these notes, but I'll type something in parentheses to make it clear that I'm not sure about it. It can be really hard to know which notes to pay attention to and which to ignore though, especially when you're just starting out. And this is part of the art of it all, but honestly, uh, your instinct is critical here. So just pay attention to the feeling in your gut. And when all else fails, that is a great guide. Anyway, once I've got my notes organized, I turn the bullet points into checkboxes and I'm ready to start. Most days I'll sit down to write and I'll knock out like one or two of the minor notes first. These are often things like typos and quick dialogue fixes, but knocking them out makes me feel like I'm making progress. And then I'll check the boxes and move on to a medium or major note, being sure to leave some minor notes for future sessions so that I can just get that same feeling of momentum at the start of each of them. When I've executed all the notes, I print the script once again, I go through it for typos or other things that I might need fixing, I execute those, and then once again, I ship it off to a new round of readers. Something that can be trickier to organize, but that can be immensely helpful, is if you can put together a meetup or a Zoom with the people who have read your latest draft. An hour of conversation talking about their notes can really help you zero in on what they were thinking and why, and you'll often find yourself coming up with many of the fixes right in that session. And they'll also get a better idea of your intent and may have additional ideas or at least like additional context that can be really, really helpful. Again, these you know can be tricky to organize in a timely fashion and they're also one more thing that you're asking of those people. So I'm not recommending that you um, need to do them as an absolute part of your process, but they can be really helpful if you have those relationships or they seem open to it. Uh, I'd recommend doing it after you organize your notes, but before you start working on them for real. When your script has gone through a couple full rewrites and you know it's getting closer, uh, something that can be a massive help is a table read. This can be around an actual table or it can just be a Zoom. Uh, the first few times I ever did it, it was around a backroom table at a bar. But the point is that you get some smart people together to read your script out loud and then you hear it. Um, this is a great time to bring in actors or filmmakers if you know any, especially with actors. There are a lot of aspiring people who actually see this as an opportunity to practice their own skill set, and they'll be all about being part of it. There are actors groups online everywhere, so honestly, it may not be that hard to put this together. Um, do have a writer read the action lines at least, though, because that job sucks, and it's typically best to have someone do it for whom you can kind of like later return that favor. Um, for the rest of the people present, assign them various roles ahead of time and make sure they know what those are. Uh, you can send the script out ahead of time too. You don't have to. Many actors will appreciate that though. The one thing I would say is don't ask them to read the script ahead of time. Again, they're already doing you a big favor, so let them choose how much work they're putting into it. If they want to read it ahead of time, great, but it shouldn't be a big deal if they don't. Your goal with this table read is to get a real sense of the script's flow, how it plays out emotionally, and how the dialogue sounds. Don't direct people how to read lines if they don't ask. 
Um, but if one comes across as awkward, that's a good note to make and you'll want to fix or clarify that in your script. At the end, you know, let people know that you're open to any and all feedback and you may be surprised at how great and useful that feedback actually is. And once again, people have done you a great favor here, so be sure to offer to return it however you can. Um, also, many script programs will read your script out loud for you. It's not as effective as a table read. Um, and I haven't done it myself in a very long time, but it is kind of a useful feature and something to keep in mind if you're just looking for one more way to hear the script and try and hone it. Lastly, let's talk about giving feedback. Um, I talked about this some already, but it's really an important skill to develop. It's part of how you build lasting connections with other writers, and it also helps you improve your own craft. You may feel like you don't have much to offer right now, uh, but that's okay because we all have to start somewhere. And after taking this course, I'd say you do at least have something to offer. First of all, remember the goal. Um, your goal is not to help them write something the way that you would write it. It's to help them write their movie to the best of their ability. It's important to keep that in mind as you go. It doesn't mean that you can't give notes that are rooted in your own preferences, but just like call that out if that's what you do and make sure that they know it's more of a stylistic thing. Um, the most useful notes are typically the big ones. So if a writer has to rewrite 20 straight pages to make something work, any tiny notes within those pages are probably gonna be negligible anyway. Again, it doesn't mean that you shouldn't touch on those things, but just remember that they're not the focus. The things you really wanna look for when reading a script are the things like, you know, does the script deliver emotionally? Is the protagonist active? Did the opening page and first 10 pages hook you? Does the ending work? Is the tone consistent? Did it feel surprising and unique? Was the protagonist's goal clear enough to drive the movie? Uh, do the characters feel three-dimensional and authentic? It's not an exhaustive list, but if those things are working, the script is doing something right. And if they're not, the writer needs to know. Do try and frame things in a way that's supportive and encouraging. Again, you know, getting notes stings because of how much we pour ourselves into our work. So be honest and clear, but also try and be empathetic and helpful. When I read, my personal process is that I take notes as I go. I list the page number of each note and then writing, you know, I write the note next to it in a document or even an email. Um, larger, broader notes, I'll jot down at the top of that document. When I finish, I'll try and organize everything at the top of that document into several paragraphs about all of the broader notes and any other trends that I noticed. Uh, and then I clean up the page notes and I let them know that I took those as I read. I think those can be useful for showing the writer how I actually experienced the read in real time. Finally, I wrap it up with some concluding thoughts. I remind them to stick to their vision and use what works for them, throw out the rest. Uh, and then I thank them for letting me read it because honestly, although it is work, it is also kind of an honor when somebody trusts you with their script and asks you for your thoughts on it. Uh, and so I always appreciate that. Anyway, that's my process. I have friends who mark up the PDF itself with notes and then jot down some final thoughts on the last page. I think that works too, it can be great. Um, and there are certainly other effective methods. So at the end of the day, the goal is to be clear, helpful and encouraging. If you can do that, you're doing pretty well. Anyway, that's it for this week. A brief reminder about the cost of the course. Uh, keep doing the work, you know, it is an honor system thing but you're gonna be grading yourselves next week. So first and foremost, put the work in and get those scripts finished and get a good grade. Uh, and if you've done uh, all the script stuff and you're missing any of the previous assignments, go ahead and go back and try and get those too, because why not? This is all about your education and your foundation. So if you can put in the extra time, uh, invest in it. Next, those videos are coming down in late February. I'd love more people to be able to take advantage of them. So if you're getting value out of this course, please do take time to share them with people or share them on social media. It really means a lot. Uh, third, because this is a free course uh, and it's meant to be exactly that, uh, I want people to know that my goal here is to pay it forward and provide it to, to others, especially those who might not be able to afford a typical you know, high quality screenwriting class. Uh, that said, if you'd like to tip, those tips have actually been really appreciated and you can do that at nate-davis-64 on Venmo or Nathan Graham Davis at Gmail on PayPal. For this week, we're keeping your assignments pretty simple. Write 10 to 15 pages or however many pages you need to write in order to get to the first draft by the end of this course. Second, give feedback to another amateur writer who is not in this group. Um, you know, I think Coverfly X is a great place to do this, as is the screenwriting subreddit's weekly script swap thread and the weekend read thread on there. 
Uh, you can also just post about it on social media and you know that you're offering a read and I bet you'll get takers. Uh, but anyway, that is it. So I will be back live for our final class. I cannot believe that we are almost there. It's been super fun. Thank you so much for participating. If you have any questions, leave them uh, in the comments on this video or put them in the Facebook group and I will do my best to respond as soon as possible. But other than that, happy writing. Thanks so much, everybody.